Yo, what did you do, YouTube? Welcome back to another video. Now, I know I might sound a little more quiet this episode, this reaction. People are sleeping right now. I'm trying not to wake them up. But in this reaction, we're going to kind of dive more into depth on why Gregory could be a robot. I always come back. Original links will be in the description. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, the show that's proud to pick the nerdiest option available. Anyone that picks Monty Golf is just a nerd. Woo, get Thanks. a golf. Joke's on you, Mark. Faz Cam is OP. Plus, being a nerd allowed me to discover the secret daycare room and sister location room. So who's the nerd now? Still you, me. yeah. It's still me. Last time we dove into the time travel ball pit that is Five Nights at Freddy's security breach, I walked away with some, um, let's just call them divisive conclusions. Basically, it was an episode with three separate theories packaged together. We right, proposed right, one, right. that Glamrock Freddy wasn't just your average sentient animatronic, but rather was possessed Michael. by the spirit of Michael Afton doing everything he can to protect Gregory. This one was uh, generally well received, so cool, let's keep going. Why? I feel like that's probably one that is kind of true just in general if you think about it bro it kind of does line up it might Michael just be me this random kid well because two gregory whether literally or symbolically is michael's younger brother fnaf 4's crying child i started to lose people at this point but it was really theory right, number three right. that threw us for a loop because there's a good bit of evidence in both the game and in the history of the franchise to suggest that three gregory is a robot the crying child's consciousness literally transplanted into a robotic body sometime after he mm. dies in the bite of 83 <laughs> oh and there were a lot of strong opinions on that with some people really liking the theory and others eh, not so yeah. much suddenly i was flooded by people saying that i had rushed it out just to ride the trend or that it was my dumbest theory ever to which i say no deadpool is ernest hemingway is my dumbest theory ever closely Bro. followed by wario being 10 feet tall anyway the outcry was so huge that i ended up trending on twitter because of it you know didn't get much better so this is there. what the hate Inside is note, about later in the same week i was trending again because a group of performers juggled to the song megalovania during an event for none other than the pope it only took five years my friends but it looks like that steam code i didn't know what the Undertale hate was about paid off. Called me a man. i've been hearing so much of, about the hate but i'm sorry i gotta skip it we gotta get we gotta get back on track bro Anyway, get back like on track. A lot of Thank heated you. opinions on the last one. With Twitter basically boiling down this 18 minute long 4,000 word theory down to this single image. So, uh, yeah. Facts. <laughs> thanks. Thanks for not including literally anything else. I've seen so many comments. So, before we get bro. to the next theory all about so Vanessa, many. let me just address some of the biggest counterpoints I saw to the previous theory. Not because I'm convinced I'm right, far from it, in fact, but because I think that the Gregory is crying child theory currently fits the best with everything the game has presented to us thus far. First, one of the key pieces of evidence last episode was this line right at the start of the game where Freddy says to Gregory, I feel you are broken. This, to me, was a clear connection back to the crying child from FNAF 4 where psychic friend Fredbear says to him, you are broken. I mean, kind of speaks for itself. Yeah. It's a parallel that's made stronger when you actually remember how that line gets delivered back in that game. There was really no way of knowing back when FNAF 4 was released, but thanks to a secret room found in Sister Location, we know that psychic friend Fredbear is actually a plushie with a walkie-talkie inside of him. A walkie-talkie that allowed William Afton oh. to scare and manipulate his youngest son. Father of the year, ladies and gentlemen. Also know that throughout FNAF 4, all of William's lines use the color FFFF57, a bright golden yellow. Golden bunny, golden yellow, makes sense. But the iconic final lines of you're broken, I will put you back together, actually use a different color. A lighter yellow, FFFFA0. Back then, we never really came to a satisfying explanation. Was it a mistake? Was was it another spirit? Was it maybe the puppet? But now, seven years of investigation okay. later, we know for sure someone else is indeed talking here. Someone who, in sister location, is mistaken for his dad. Someone who turns purple just like his dad. Someone who can't mm. die like his dad. And someone who had the lines immediately prior apologizing to his kid brother, but when that didn't get through, decided to try comforting him through the voice of his best friend. It's Michael Afton, represented by a lighter color of yellow a 
color that symbolically connects him back to his father. In short, we have Michael Afton in FNAF okay. saying the line, you're broken to his brother through the voice of a Fred Bear plush. And here in Security Breach, if we're right about all this, we once again have him saying the same line. Right, 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 right. His brother, yeah, I'm on it, I'm on it. Of another Freddy, this time Glamrock Freddy. I personally think it's a really cool narrative connection between all these games. But a lot of people were quick to point out that there's dialogue in the game files that was cut from the final release, where Freddy says that Gregory is bleeding. Specifically, he says, Your arm is cut badly, and I am detecting blood. You are injured. This, for many people, disproved okay. that Gregory's an animatronic, and uh, I actually have two things to say about that. First, when I've used cut lines of dialogue in the past, the internet has in no uncertain terms told me that I can't, but uh, now apparently it's okay. Eh, kinda inconsistent there, guys, and honestly, I think cutting it, regardless of the reason, shows that it didn't fit the final creative intent of the game, but anyway, if that's the case, then I gotta bring this line up. A cut line of dialogue discovered by GB or a recharged in the game files. This one is Freddy saying, Gregory, I know why you're not in the customer database. I remember you from the... And it cuts off. Obviously, it's vague. It's kept oh. very intentionally vague. But it also shows that Gregory is special in a way that the other disappeared kids aren't. There's a reason he's not in the customer base. He's from somewhere specific that Freddy knows about. If I were to guess, I'd say like the underground pizzeria. But, you know, that's just me hypothesizing. Adding to the Gregory is special idea is the fact that Chica knows his name. She calls mm -hmm. it out in the middle of the pizzeria. Strange detail okay. for a kid who supposedly has no records in the system. Secondly, and I, uh, I hate to be the bearer of bad news here, but in the books, because everybody loves when I go back to that well, animatronic children do actually bleed. They can also cry and feel cold. Heck, they can even feel hungry and eat. Wait a you know, minute, you what? The books for that one, you can just see it with Chica's pizza obsession and security breach. So to tell me that a robot child can't bleed? Yeah, I think you gotta really look at the franchise that we're talking about here. And for Hold up, hold up. Keeping the PG-13. Everyone was confused about the timeline of Crying Child still being alive and the fact that he would be older at this point. That wouldn't actually be the case. If you know, Sandwich you know. Children in the books stay at whatever age they're built to be. Charlotte Emily actually had four separate versions of herself Dang. built. One for each stage of her life. So that way she could grow older, but she would just assume a new animatronic body each time. So Crying Child still being young would actually make more sense here. And to everyone saying, why would he say stuff like, Don't want to be crushed and twisted into a meat pretzel. No, again, Charlotte... Charlotte in the books is shocked to learn her true nature in the final chapters. Her consciousness had been grafted onto a childhood toy while she was alive, and after her tragic death, had been placed inside of her robot body to function as her memory. So for all she knew, she was just a normal human being just like anyone else. Is it oh. dumb? Yeah, I'll say that it is. Is it complicated? <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Hold but on. is it Hold giving on. us insight into the rules that Scott and everyone who touches this universe operate by? Yes. It undeniably is. Lastly, for everyone who spammed my feed with pictures of sad white boys in striped shirts saying that you had found the crying child, thank you for your help uncovering the lore. I get the joke. All white boys with brown hair and striped shirts are apparently the crying child. But remember what series we're talking about here, friends. Visual design details have always been an important part of figuring these games out. Take a look at Baby. During sister location, she has green eyes. But when you play her mini game, she has blue ones. At least right. until she kills Elizabeth Afton, who... Lo and behold, had green eyes. Superficial design features like oh. this help us to connect the dots. Are they the be all and end all of but he's not wrong. Evidence? No, but they do help support an argument. So a little brown haired boy in shorts with a shirt and two stripes? Seems sus. Have you ever heard of Among Us, Gregory? Speaking of eyes, for all the complaints about the last episode, no one seemed to have any answers to what I see as the two strongest pieces of physical evidence here. Why does Gregory look different when Freddy gets Roxy's x ray eyes? You look different. Yeah, and true. And secondly, why does Gregory's vision glitch when he sees Vanny? <laughs> I got so many comments about this, bro. I'm not. I'm. I'm gonna be honest with you. Think about it like this, right? If he was normal, and and there's just a lady in a bunny costume skipping towards you, why would you, like, CRT, bro? Like, why would it fuzz up if it's just a normal lady in a costume just just skipping to you? Like, that doesn't make a lot of sense. It took me like 50 tries doing this chase. That's why I'm so passionate about it. Like, I raged doing this because chica either got me or vanny got me or it that's, a, that's another day bro another story another Why does day he have such a weird visual reaction to her and to literally no other character in the game well you hear that high-pitched ringing sound as vanny skips and gets closer 
Yeah, like that's just weird. It seems to be a disruptor that makes her invisible to animatronics with older model eyes. In the fire ending, Freddy, who couldn't see her at any point in the game, explicitly says, I can see you now. I have new eyes. I mean, this is exactly how the much-hated sound illusion discs from the books work, creating a high-frequency sound to make people and robots invisible and or look differently. But I'm already fighting a losing battle over here, so I'm just gonna gloss over that. <laughs> anyway, to me, it reads as Gregory's robotic eyes being disrupted. I mean, why have CRT? lines over the screen and not some other type of filter to show that his vision is getting disrupted. In fact, why have the same CRT lines as the security cameras all mm. around the Pizzaplex? But there's one final piece of evidence I'd like to talk about to help solidify that previous theory before we move on, and that is the screenshot here of the final scene from the Savior ending, where you rescue Vanny from the control of Glitch. Oh, well, hold and, on, uh, hold on, I what does he mean? Quotation marks here because there aren't any official sources giving names to the various endings. In the game files, they're just labeled as S1, S2, and S3 based on the number of stars that you get for them. It is worth noting though that this is the only three star ending that currently exists, which seems to imply that it has some level of importance to it. But here we see our three main characters, Gregory, Freddy, and mm -hmm. Vanessa all sitting on a hill, which as I pointed out last time is very similar to the FNAF 6 Gravestone Hill. But that's not what's important here. What I want to point out is the ice cream. Gregory is holding a golden Freddy shaped ice cream with part of its head bitten off. If Gregory is not meant to parallel back to the crying child in any way shape or form I'm let him this finish. detail is just mean and irresponsible this ice cream is the crying child story coming full circle he was terrified of animatronics and ended up being bitten by the golden freddy spring suit but now he's the one sitting on a hill taking a big old bite out of golden freddy that is not me reading too much into this that is me lightly interpreting a very clear image that was put directly into this game by the designers it is barely even subtle and despite him wearing a blue shirt in most of the endings here his shirt is colored purple, just like his father's signature color. Couple that with literally everything else, his lack of records, okay. the fact that he goes into the charging station. So I stand by my theory that Gregory is an animatronic of the crying child. Is it a perfect answer? No. Do I love the fact that it complicates the lore even more? No. But does it answer the most questions with the evidence that we have? I believe it does. It, it does. It does. It does. Fazgu. But now, four pages into this episode, let's actually stop to talk about Vanessa. Shall we? Yes, sir. I made a passing statement we need about to know. this final image felt to me like the three Afton children getting reunited. Crying child, Michael, mm -hmm. and Elizabeth Afton. Well, we left Chloe's off. daughter that done cool. got scooped by baby back in sister location. It's a scene that, to me, feels like the narrative finally giving them a sense of closure after they quite literally die as a result of their dad's evil deeds. Last right. time I briefly right. made mention of Vanessa's blonde hair and... I'm not gonna lie, this, this, uh, this close up on Vanessa though... I'm gonna focus. You must stay focused, my brothers. You must stay focused. In this ending, we actually see two scenes of her wearing the signature Afton purple. Even mm. the ice cream cone, as opposed to something like Gregory's novelty pop, is a potential callback to her death, where Baby delivered an ice cream cone to her before oh, she true. did the scoop. And when you look at the connections true. between these two characters, it's more than just a couple of visual similarities. The biggest secret in Security Breach right now is a series of 16 retro CDs, invisible collectibles that only Freddy can see hidden in every obscure corner of the game's map. Then, to play these things, you actually need to have also found the secret sister location room that we talked about last time. Now, these CDs are, um, well, uh, they're, they're problematic. They open up a whole separate can of worms. They're recordings of therapy sessions following two separate individuals, patient 46 and patient 71. The exact identity of patient 46 is a theory for next time that will absolutely launch us into yet another flame war, but early- Are we going into the next reaction? You guys want to see it, bro? If you want to see it, let me know. We did do it, bro. We will do it. I want to know now. That it's it's interesting. Vanessa speaking. Hello, Vanessa. How are you feeling today? These are recordings from therapy sessions that Vanessa had while she was at the job for the FNAF AR game Special Delivery. She mentions speaking to a man named Lewis on several occasions, and we discover right. that she's also buying fake fur, both of which are things that we see in emails from FNAF AR. By the last of Vanessa's recordings, she's leaving that job for a new job somewhere else, most likely the job of security guard here mm. in Security Breach. I'm needed somewhere else. Now. But 
let's dive into the good stuff, shall we? In Vanessa's second tape, we learn about a custody battle that happened between her parents. Her dad won using manipulative tactics, forcing his daughter to falsely testify. Your dad made you follow instructions, didn't he? I'm talking about the custody battle between your mum and your dad. Your dad didn't play oh. fair, did he? He used to make your mum look bad in court. After losing custody of her daughter, Vanessa's mother, well, here's what the tape does. I know your mum after she lost the custody case. It glitches, implying that her mother ended her own life, which would explain why Mrs. Afton is missing from all the games, and why she may have wound up being rebuilt as What did he do, Sophie? the motherly Ballora and sister location. A robot that, wouldn't you know it, sings about her inescapable depression now that the walls of her house are empty. All I see is an empty room. No more joy, an empty tomb. We also hear Vanessa lines like this. Oh, you like those? Apparently, the janitor on this floor has a garden and has been putting bouquets in the offices here for years. Vanessa likes flowers. A small detail, okay. but you know me, small all details could often be the biggest evidence. Who else do we know in the series that has an affinity for flowers? Well, think back to FNAF 4. Remember Four. this random empty bedroom with a huge portrait of a flower on the wall? It's mm -hmm. Elizabeth's room before she got scooped. Then you have Vanessa lines like this. Mm. Lots of people know more than I do. Sometimes I need to listen. Now, this might be a stretch, but I believe it's referring to when Elizabeth got scooped by Baby. Her dad had repeatedly and explicitly warned her not to go near Baby, but she didn't listen. And in doing so, she ended up getting herself trapped inside the animatronic. Don't tell Daddy that I'm here. I wanted to watch your show too. I don't know why he won't let me come see you. You're one. Okay. Vanessa okay. also says in her tapes that she doesn't like dark basements. I have a craft space in my basement. Maybe I could come up with something you could learn to do. I don't like dark basements. It's another line that seems to be pointing us in the direction of Baby, who is trapped underground for years in Circus Baby's entertainment. The theories are hitting, bro. The rentals looking for a way back to the surface. The, the theory is hitting. Before, but they always put me back. They always put us back inside. There's nowhere for us to hide. Bro, look at Anna, bro. Look at big, tall loose wires, bro. Like, why are you here? Here, there is nowhere to go. And to put one final nail in this coffin, right back in the second CD, we actually learn the name of Vanessa's father. I feel like I know your dad too. No. Right? Bill is short for William. That's just the game trolling us with a coincidence, right? Wrong. You see, going back to FNAF AR, we learn that Vanessa's last name begins with an A. From there, we can connect the dots. Bill A, William Afton. But did mm. baby burn at the end of FNAF 6? Oh, <laughs> yeah, she did. But you see how effective that was. Yeah. How are you not dead? I mean, to be fair, the thought that burning him is going to work is stupid because people have tried to burn him to death no less than three times in this franchise. Yeah. Spoiler alert, it doesn't work. But yeah. here's the kicker. At the end of the game, we meet the Blob, a weird tentacle monster made up of all the original members of the series. FNAF 1's Chica and Bonnie, FNAF 2's Mangle, Sister mm -hmm. Location's Funtime Freddy, a random endoskeleton crawling out of the bottom, the puppet mask without tears, I might point out, and Baby's face. Now, don't get me started on this being Baby's original face and not Scrap Baby's updated look where she came back to FNAF 6 in. I have words about about that. Anyway, look at them all here on screen. You notice anything strange? Most right. of the animatronics' eyes are lit up. Funtime Freddy, Chica, Mangle, even this random endoskeleton at the bottom. But now take a look back at Baby's mask. The eyes are blacked out. So although the blob has absorbed Baby's body during the burning down of Freddy Fazbear's pizza place, her mm -hmm. spirit, the spirit of Elizabeth Afton, is no longer present. It is unaccounted for. It is on the loose. And as such, potentially at large within the game. Is she in some way, Vanessa. And if so, how? The truth is, I don't know. This game has got my brain in so many knots, I might as well be a sailboat. I don't think there's oh. any evidence to support any conclusion at this point in time. But I do know that this is what the evidence is heavily pointing us towards. The design similarities, the missing spirit, the purple right, color, right. the ice cream, the voice lines, the personality traits. And again, the narrative theme mm, of ding, three acting kids reuniting and moving on after a traumatic past. It gives everyone this nice full circle ending, even if it's 
it's only meant to be symbolic. And the screen really does feel like it's the end, finally, for these three characters. Maybe next time we'll finally see some new faces. So enough about them, we're moving it... past those three. There's still other mysteries that we have to solve here. What happened to Glamrock Bonnie? Who Next. is patient? Where Bonnie at? Where, where Bonnie at? Hmm? Where Bonnie? No, forget that. Skip that. Where Foxy at, bro? They don't give my boy Foxy enough love, bro. In, in my opinion, bro, Bonnie, Bonnie scariest than Foxy. In my opinion. Because Bonnie, bro, they be giving him the craziest designs. One. And two, Foxy, you just can't outrun that, bro. You like once you like you look on the camera, he's sprinting down the hallway. You got 0.5 seconds to hit the right door. Like it's, it's, 46, and why are they here? What's the deal with that room full of post-it notes? Yeah, you forgot about that one, didn't you? I forgot it's, all about that. Importance. And did you happen to notice the other missing animatronic from this game? Because I certainly did, and I think they might be hiding in plain sight. So next time, we get to cover some mysteries that don't require us talking about dead characters getting rebuilt into robots. <laughs> Scratch that. We're, we're talking about William Afton. That's kind of unavoidable at this point. Oh, this franchise is so ridiculous. Anyway, next time, we're going to sweep up a few other mysteries as we try to make more sense out of the game yeah. that quite literally threw everything against the wall to see what would stick speaking of things sticking on walls why don't you spice up your decor with some okay i, I think now it's just a sponsor yeah the rest of this is just going to be a sponsor appreciate you guys for watching it means a lot to me i love doing these because bro it's interesting like i know a lot of you like why do you keep reacting to these bro they're interesting you no know, a lot a lot of my community loves this bro if you don't like it you know Go in the comments, let me know, like, hey, can you play something different? Like, like try, try this game, try that game. I'm still going to try to upload other content, but, you know, this is still a horror gaming channel, and FNAF just happens to be one of the big horror games, you know? Like, like if there's a big three or four games, FNAF's in it, bro. Like, it's no, it's no debate. I appreciate you guys for watching. If you want to see more, hit that like button. If you're new, if you're new, I stuttered, bro. I tried. If you're new and you enjoy the content, consider subscribing, but it's, it, you don't have to, bro. I'm just saying, if you want to, go ahead, actually turn on your notifications, watch the videos, bro. Give them a chance. If it's some, if it's not FNAF, give it a chance, because you never know if you're going to like it or not. You might you might like it. If you don't, it's cool. I'm still going to be doing the videos. Um, But I appreciate you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.